Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. The federal government is pretty close to collapsing in on itself, or they're going to have to do something that they don't want to do, which I believe will cause them even more problems inside of the uh, the, the party members, you know, not necessarily the political actors, but those people behind the scenes that are pulling the strings and are the ones that are giving them all the money. Just to catch you up, the Green Slush Fund, which is uh, the development of Sustainable Technology Canada, which is basically a bunch of money that the government was throwing at green, um, transitioning into a green economy because they made the move without having any green economy in place. So they got a bunch of their friends together and they just said, you guys can all have these jobs trying to figure it out. Then those people started giving contracts to themselves. They started taking money from the Canadian taxpayer, funneling it into their company. And who knows where it goes from there, right? That's how you wash something. How do they give them? Maybe they took a million dollars from the Canadian taxpayer and gave themselves a $900,000 bonus that year. You don't know. They own these places. And so that scandal came out. And the conservatives were are chasing it down. And there's a public inquiry about the whole thing. Well, it turns out the public inquirer is getting hampered from getting at the bottom of things because the documents are coming redacted and the documents are not coming at all. So there was a motion introduced on June. Well, there was a motion introduced and then on June 10th of 2024, they voted on this motion. And so that's to give you an idea. And here, here is the motion being voted on. First, there was an amendment introduced in an effort to try and stop the motion. The table will now compile the results of the vote. Yes, for 171, 171. Nays, count 150, 150. I declare the amendment carried. So there's the amendment carried with what you can see is 321 members of parliament. Now, when you consider that there's at this time three seats that are vacant, right? We got the, you know, the by-elections of Toronto, Montreal, and uh, Winnipeg. We're at 324. So what's that, 99%? I mean, that's most of, of the seats that are in Parliament, right? So there can be no denying that this is the majority, 171 majority, that wants it. So that was the amendment to the motion. And then they went ahead and they voted on the actual motion, which they, they followed up right away and, and made the same vote. So this all happens on June 10, 2024. Fed table will now compile the results of the vote. Yes, for 174, 174. Nays, count 148, 148. I declare the motion as a. Now, here you can see that they've actually put three more votes on to the yay and two votes taken off of the nay, which is to say that the Liberal Party lost two supporters in the actual documentation. Now we have 174 people, MPs, who have all decided that the documents need to be surrendered. From this moment, they have to surrender the documents unredacted. They have to surrender the, the, redoc- the documents within 30 days. No alterations whatsoever. And it's a lot of documents. Like the Justice Department withheld 10,000, for example. They got 30 days to surrender it. But almost right away, they go on the summer break. But they, that, that clock is still counting. Those 30 days is uh, still running. Now we come back to September... And they have what documents they did surrender. They didn't. They didn't respect the rules of the house. They said no, no, we don't have to. But you're always talking about how the rules of the house are the law of the land, and the liberals are, you know, supporters of the law in a rules-based country. And da 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 da. Now they're weaving and dodging. But to get movement on it, the liberals had to introduce what's called a um, point of privilege which is to say what exactly what it sounds like. There are certain rights that are extended to the people in the House, the privileges, and this group, this uh, Liberal Party not, re- not surrendering those documents is violating the privilege, violating the rights, violating essentially Canadians. So this was September 16, 2024. House, I recognize the honorable member. I see that the honorable member from Regina Capel is rising on a point of a question of privilege. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. 
I am rising on a question of privilege following my notice under Standing Order 48 concerning the failure of the government to comply with the order which this House adopted on Monday, June 10th. A majority of the House voted that day to compel the government to produce a series of unredacted records concerning Sustainable Development Technology Canada, a, bo a body engulfed in Liberal scandal in recent years, leading to it being dubbed the Green Slush Fund. So there he introduced the motion that says they, well, it wasn't, it was, it was a, um, as you heard, a question of privilege. The House decided that the Liberals were to surrender, the Liberal departments were to surrender all the documents associated with this case unredacted on June 10th. Then on September 16, because they had not done so, he had to bring this to the um, chair. I did a video on it. Now the chair, he was left with no position. He either had to acknowledge the, real, the reality of the situation or if he had thrown in with the Liberals, then there would have been a different vote to have the chair removed for not being impartial. So he released his uh, ruling a couple of weeks later. On October 1st, he released the ruling saying that the Liberals absolutely have to uh, have violated the question of privilege and that they have to start to surrender those documents. But to make everybody happy, that he was wondering if maybe they could put the motion to the procedures committee, which is going to have to say, yes, there is, can be nobody above the law. Now the question becomes, how come we first, let me just say this. The argument here is that the liberals are trying to say that they don't have to show the police any documents that have wrongdoing in them. I don't know how flimsy they believe the argument is, but from where I'm sitting, it's exceedingly flimsy. What you're saying is that you have the right to withhold information from the Canadian public based on the fact that you might get arrested for it, which is, of course, the problem. But it doesn't matter what their position is because the majority voted this way. You saw it. 174 of the sitting members said, we want these documents released. It doesn't matter what your opinion is on the matter. And that's, I think, where, where Karina Gould is having a hard time understanding. It doesn't matter what her opinion is. I mean, they are always talking about how they were elected by Canadians and this, that, and the other thing. Well, the Canadians also elected everybody that voted yes. These people want these documents released. Now, I'm going to let you hear the, the serious cope and whining of the Liberal uh, MP as she basically tries to... I don't know, Frankenstein together an argument that makes no, has no cohesion. Now, the House of Commons and parliamentarians have extraordinary powers and extraordinary privileges that they get to exercise to be able to compel documents. That is something that is agreed upon. But what they are doing for the first time, unprecedented in Canadian history, is compelling documents not for the use of parliamentarians, but to give directly to our federal police, to the RCMP. Well, that is completely inappropriate, and it is a complete abuse of power, and it is something that should not happen in a democracy. I don't want to live in a country where politicians can direct the police on what to do, where they can go and suspend the charter rights of Canadians because they have the right to do so. The real question here is just because you have the right to do something, should you actually do it? You know, you made this argument to the speaker, and the speaker disagreed with you. Well, I just think that the mouthful of cope that she spit out in that particular uh, scrum was pretty vulgar. The idea that people who will invoke the Emergencies Act because people were parked in the streets, just because you, ha you can do a thing, Karina Gould, doesn't mean you should, but you went ahead and did it anyway. You put the RCMP and the Army in the streets to attack citizens who were protesting your positions, who were asking for bodily autonomy, and you didn't have any problem with it at all. Right now, if somebody puts up a mean tweet, you try to send the police to their door. That's the, the, the idea that, let's look at the time that uh, Christia Freeland attacked the rebel news reporter with the police. Let's look at the time that the police gave coffee and donuts to people who were blocking roads. Just because you can do a thing doesn't mean you should do a thing. Those are your words, aren't they, MP Gould? 
Now you're talking up there about some flimsy ass argument, how you don't believe that because it's never happened before, it should never happen. The word is precedent, meaning that it had to happen one time to begin happening again and again and again. The fact that the precedent is going to be set right now, is just a landmark decision. They will call that because let's be honest, you're hiding something. You're either protecting yourself or you're protecting your friends or you're doing both. The huge amounts of money and corruption that are flying out of the door of this green slush fund that you think that you can shelter your friends from by redacting the truth or in the case of uh, MP Ivani, just simply refusing to turn them over at all because he believes that he's above the will of the House of Commons, right? He doesn't believe that the people can hold him to account because he's a minority government leader, don't you know? He believes that the, on the one hand, you have to do anything that he says because he's a minority government leader, but on the other hand, he doesn't have to respect anything that you say. So does Karina Gould. To say to yourself, oh, it's unprecedented is the most ridiculous argument I could ever hear of, especially coming from a Canadian politician whose rule of law is predicated on precedent. I mean, there are parts of the Napoleonic Code in Quebec, I'll grant you that. But for the most part, we work under British common law, which is a rules a set of rules based on precedent, meaning if it happened one time over there, then it has to be the same over there. So the fact that you're refusing to surrender these documents, the fact that you think that you can, you can flaunt um, parliament simply indicates that you think you're above the law. Well, we don't agree with you. And we think that giving these documents to the RCMP and having them find laws that were broken in the bodies of laws that are already existent to keep members of parliament from being too corrupt and having them get arrested for it, having them in, in, you know, in a perfect world, do time, pay, pay it all back, go to prison for it and forever be stained by their corruption. That's what we believe should happen because that's what Canadians want to have happen because th you might be corrupted. You might tell yourself that you don't have to listen to the will of, and the law of the land and the will of the people, but the people don't agree with you. The people want the law of the land to be exercised. They want to know that they can sleep at night knowing their politicians are not going to be corrupted with the money that they entrust them with to do what's right for the country. I mean, on the one hand, you're talking about how everybody's got to go green. And on the other hand, the people that you put in charge of going green are stealing every nickel. So where is all of this money coming from? Oh, my great, great grandchildren are going to have to pay it back. Come on. Of course, she didn't get treated well by the press at all. The one guy that you heard asked, say that comment about what the speaker had said also was the guy that asked two questions and then nobody else in the scrum asked her a single question. She just stormed off. She was like, okay, thank you. And, you know, and she walked away, which, uh, you know, I don't have much. I, I think that the, the media has let us all down. I believe that these kind of corruption should have been exposed years ago because they have access to things that we don't. You give me access to it, and I will absolutely 100% expose it to the light of day. But to tell yourself that you're above the will of the parliament, that's just, that doesn't make any sense especially as a member of parliament to tell yourself that you don't have to do it because you don't want to, it's just contempt and you need to be put in prison for it or, or find appropriately, you know, 20, $30 million, but they don't care. However, because of this, they know the parliament won't move anywhere. Now I've thought of many ways to try to put this to in a perspective that people might understand, but it's kind of like that time you went to your girlfriend's, Christmas party or your, her family's like gathering and you did something inappropriate and now she won't talk to you until you fix that. Well, it's the same idea. Nothing can come out of the mouths of the liberal party that are procedural until they have solved this problem until they have fixed this problem. And they could do it in a heartbeat if they simply surrender all of the documents that they have redacted and surrender all of the documents that they've refused to, to surrender, but they won't. And the reason that they're refusing to do it, the reason that they're going on camera and bit trying to gaslight Canadians into thinking that they're doing something virtuous and something um, magnanimous is because they're hiding something. It's because they know that either they are or friends of theirs are going to be put in prison for gross negligence of the law. If I were you, I would be writing letters to every single, like to your, to your sitting member of parliament, whether, no matter what party they be, to the RCMP, 
you should be writing them and saying to you that this needs something needs to happen. You need to execute these letters because if they surrender the letters, there's no promise that the RCMP has to look at them. I say letters, but I mean documents. However, if the RCMP refuses to to look at them, if refuses to find the crimes that are blatant and right in front of their face, now we can see that there's how how far the stain and the corruption and the rot goes. And now we must consider to ourselves: is the highest, uh, strongest police force in our country corrupted? We have to ask ourselves: are they willing to sacrifice their own um, reputations and their own careers to defend a few people who would throw them under the bus in a heartbeat? And of course, the best part of all of this is that these aren't the Sopranos or any kind of, you know, this, this isn't the, uh, you know, Godfather or Scarface or any of that stuff. You start arresting these people and they will start telling you the truth in a heartbeat. They will start throwing each under the, bu- each under, under the bus in, in a second. It'll be awesome. It'll be great to look at. It'll be, it'll be nothing less than what they deserve because they have put this country through a nightmare. And to steal our money, to take our hard-earned money, to say that they're going to do something for us and then turn around and rip us off is something that we, I think we can all agree they need to pay for. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.